What's going on guys? Cam Sick TV here. Today we're going to be working on a 2006 Ford F-150 with a bad front wheel bearings on the left and the right. Well, actually the right side. The left side is good, but the right side is making a lot of noise. But as you know, you want to do stuff in pairs, especially when it comes to suspension components. I'm going to show you guys what to look for um, on a wheel bearing that has no play, but it is bad due to the noise and due to lubrication issues internally of the bearing being weak which will lead to a shaking bearing in the future. I recommend safely jacking up the vehicle and supporting it on jack stands. So as you can tell, it's off the ground. You wanna check for real bearing plate up and down and left and right. Up and down, no play whatsoever. No play whatsoever left and right. But check this out. The shielding in the back, I checked it. It's not touching the rotor at all. Check this out. See, what you're hearing there is the internal bearing actually lacking lubrication and it's starting to disintegrate, overheat, and over time it's gonna end up having play kind of like this is the same style bearing. It's a press-in bearing, the rotors are pressed-in bearings. As you can tell, it was making the same noise my iPhone 50 is making. And then it got quiet. And then at 45 to 50 miles per hour, it started squealing, like But check this out. Can you see that? That's not good, that's play. So if you lead your noisy bearings, what mine is doing, you can hear it right there. Hear it? That's what the F-150 sounds like. But then it led to that. We are on the driver's side of the vehicle. No play up and down. No play left and right. Everything is solid. You're not gonna hear that much noise coming from this side as you are going to hear from that side. There's a slight howl, but it's not as bad. The noise I was getting was coming mostly from the right side of the front of the vehicle. All right, so no further ado, let's get this wheel taken apart and show you guys what you got to do to change one of these front wheel bearings on a rear wheel drive F-150. Dot three fluid, any type, it doesn't matter what brand you go with. You're gonna need a torque wrench, you're gonna need a good size socket set. The jobs we're gonna be doing is needing a 13 millimeter for the caliper bolts, and the mounting bolts should be a 21 millimeter. We're gonna need dikes for the cotter pin, you need a flathead screwdriver to take off your center caps right here, 3 8 wrench so you can take the bleeder. I believe it's a 3 8 wrench on this one, or maybe a 10 millimeter. And a 21 millimeter for your lug nuts. See, you remove your cap, you have access to your lug nuts, spindle um, cover, cotter pin, and then your spindle nut for your bearing. It's a 21 millimeter for the lug nuts. Get them loose. So I'm over here at my truck. Yes, I know. I have a sway bar link that I have to install. I just saw that. But this is gonna be a 10 millimeter nipple on the caliper. The hose that I got fits right over it perfectly, and there's no possibility of it coming out or leaking. Now, you're gonna break the nipple loose. I already did, because it's easier for me to do it off camera, because it's one-handed. Open the nipple. You're gonna start seeing brake fluid coming out. Gravity doing its job right there. Put this in a safe manner where it's not gonna, you know, get in your way. Grab your, this is the easiest way to do it if you worked in a dealership before, you know why I'm doing this, flat rate. It just gets done a lot quicker. Go like this and watch the fluid come out. And as you guys can see, it works easy. Basically compressing your piston and not ruining your ABS module or sensors. And after you compress your piston, so you have a lot of room in there, 
as you can see. You're gonna want to grab a 13 millimeter, your caliper bolts. I already broke them loose prior to turning on the camera, just for simplicity's sake. On the corner, on the side. And take your caliper, put it somewhere safe, or if you have one of those tools that holds it right here, like an S-tool, holds it to something. I'm gonna put mine right over there on the lower control arm. So, you got it on there pretty straight. There's no possibility of, you know, breaking it. And yes, I am using a chrome socket. The comment section is there for a reason. You can roast me. And that comes out. You got your caliper, caliper mount out of the way. All you got is your rotor left. I recommend putting a pan on the floor only because this driveway is pretty clean. Don't want to mess it up. And it looks bad afterwards when you are doing a job for a customer or, you know, you want to be professional. So basically put something to collect all the dust that falls. You can see there's a lot of dust there. Now, you want to take your cotter pin, straighten it up until you get your cotter pin straight. Take your dikes or any type of pliers that you have accessible. And your trick is just grab it and push up. Boom, it comes right out. And you got your retainer, crown, and then boom, you got your spindle nut. That's going to be a 36 millimeter. I recommend using an impact on it because it will not come off. It, it will come off, but it'll give you some hard time. But ease of sake, 36 millimeter, and zap that right out with an impact. Grab a 36 millimeter axle nut socket, put it on there, put it on impact mode, and go to town. Now you guys see why I said use an impact. Yeah, that's 295, 295 foot pounds holding that thing in. So, yeah, impacts your friend. And I'm probably gonna have to, yeah, see, as you can tell, the wheel bearing is bad. Well, I just loosened it, but it's bad. So I'm gonna have to hit it out. It's uh, a little stubborn, but she's coming out. So, uh, yeah, I know it's an eight ouncer. doing that until it comes out yeah it's almost out as you can tell a couple of attempts you're gonna see it start coming out then you want to go it should come out fast. yeah you get the point i apologize in advance for not showing you guys how to put this in basically you clean the spindle right here and then you take your rotor and you line it up straight put one hand here on the right side one hand here on the left side and at the same time easy easy in, and it should slide right in as long as you cleaned that surface area right there and then now clean up brake rotors reinstall your caliper mount your brake pads and then you can start working on your spindle nut. The reason why is because you want the brakes applied. Since it's only two wheel drive, there's no way to lock this up unless you put a pry bar there, but there's no indentations in the ground, so I can't do that. So I have to put something to hold the brakes. For simplicity's sake, I recommend taking your new spindle nut. I do not recommend using the old one because these spread out and it's a one-time use only. So I don't recommend using these again. You have to put Loctite on there and make sure you torque it down, but I do not recommend using the same one. For 20 bucks, you can get two brand new ones. Okay. It comes with Loctite inside already, red one, so it cannot come apart on you. Install it. Do not, whatever you do, do not use an impact on this. Torque it down. I forgot to mention, 
make sure your slides work up and down smoothly. They're not getting stuck. They're working as they should. Mine are. It's kind of hard to do it with one hand. Make sure they're not sticking. And reinstall. That's it. Bottom one, always use new hardware. Install your new brake pads, new hardware. And you wanna install your anti-rattle. That's what it's called, it's called the anti-rattle. Now it's time to torque down the wheel bearing. If you are like me and you're solo, I recommend putting a setup like this. Obviously you pump your brakes, let the pad go back seated. All right, brake as you can tell, the brakes are on. It's not gonna move whatsoever. Easiest way to torque this down by yourself. Get your 36 millimeter, get your torque wrench, set it up to 295 foot pounds and torque it down do not jerk it do not torque it down too quick you want an easy slow steady release the brake pedal counterclockwise five times and then retorque it just to make sure it's good so the manufacturer calls for 295 foot pounds to torque this wheel the front wheel on a railroad drive my torque wrench only goes up to 140 150 so what i did is i put it at 140 and a half 140 and a half so that's basically um 295 divided by two you get 147.5 and i'll show you how to calculate that right now That's 147. Do it again until you get two clicks. That's 295 foot pounds. Yeah, it's not easy. I'm a lightweight, I'm weak. Okay. Now we're gonna go inside the vehicle, release the brakes counterclockwise five times. Then recheck the torque. One, two, three, four, five. Reapply the brakes, check your torque. And you will know your torque is right because when you put that castle nut back on with the cotter pin, it should go right in there. All right, guys. Properly torqued, release the pressure on your torque wrench because it will mess up the spring if you don't. And now, off to putting on the cast line cotter pin. You will always know when your bearings are torqued down properly, it's when you install the um, castle nut it lines right up to the collar pin. So, look at that. You put your collar pin in. I know you're supposed to be using a new collar pin, but I couldn't find this size anywhere locally. 
this is all I got. Later on in the future, I'll replace it. This is the after installation. Make sure everything is good. It's not that noisy. What you're hearing there is a little brake pad. But other than that, no more noise. Period on these brake rotors where you're doing 40 miles per hour and you're gonna wanna slow down to at least five miles per hour, kind of dramatically, but not too dramatically. Roughly about maybe six miles. Six miles total around. What this does, it's, it's called a bedding cycle. It's technically the right term for it is a break-in cycle, but they call it bed-in. It's a technical way of saying it. But what that does is it sets the brake pads into the rotors and then it prevents it from warping because if you go from 40 down to five, it's heating up, but not too hot. And then it has enough time to cool off because you're just doing city driving at that point. And after you do that, maybe about six miles, your brake um, pads and rotors are broken in and you're good to go. So as long as you take care of them like that, they're not going to warp at you and you're not going to feel any vibration at higher highway speeds and stuff. See, like right now, I'm slowing down again, five miles an hour, go back up to speed. So keep doing that a couple times and it just basically seats your pads and rotors together thank you for watching subscribe like more videos to come and hopefully this helped you guys out this is not an educational this is an educational video it's not a how-to so take my advice with a grain of salt